Hello, Team New Horizons family. Juwan Buford broadcasting from Detroit metropolitan area, as always. Um, and look, or suburb Detroit, to be more accurate. <laughs> but in respect, um, you know, the topic I want to talk about today is the topic of hitting the wall. And it's a stage that we all reach in our business, right? We've all been there. A lot of individuals in the organization are hitting the wall. And look, this isn't a criticism. It's just kind of like the natural evolution of being an entrepreneur and some of the things you just have to go through. And what's the wall? The wall is you are doing the work, right? And that's the key word. The wall is you're doing the work, right? That means you're doing the exposures, you're scheduling presentations, um, you are doing the trainings, you're participating on the Monday leadership call, you're doing all the right things, right? You're doing three ways, um, you're uh, doing R3, you're asking for referrals, but you reach a point where you're just not getting the results that you anticipated. You feel like that you're putting in the work, but things aren't necessarily going your way. You're asking for the referrals, but you're not quite getting the referrals. It's the wall, right? And I'm here to tell you that that's a good thing because that is one of the most important stages of your business, right? And how do you get over the wall? How do you transcend the wall? How do you get to a point where you begin to become more productive again? And, you know, there's a couple suggestions I'd offer or really a mindset I'd encourage you to adopt. So there are four levels of competency in any endeavor that you're involved in. I don't care if it's basket weaving. I don't care if it's running track, um, leadership, public speaking, um, playing basketball. There are four levels of competency that I want to encourage you to focus on right? And you're going to utilize these four levels to help you understand where you're at in the stage of your business and how to transcend, how to overcome the wall, right? In the beginning, when everyone starts out, you're at a stage in your business where you're unconsciously incompetent. Now, what does that mean? It's just the truth. You just don't know what you don't know, right? Anyone who's ever started any type of endeavor that requires some skill, right? You realize early on that you are unconsciously incompetent at something, right? You just are out here doing the work. You're out here doing the thing. You're out here playing the sport. You're out here involved in the endeavor. It's, it's no different when you're an entrepreneur um, as, as a legal shield entrepreneur. It's no different, right? There's a level of uh, uh, you're in your, your diaper still, right? And one of the easy examples I can give is I want to put this in perspective and make sure I give it the respect it deserves, right? I want you to think about an NBA player. By the time a player reaches the NBA, they more than likely have spent at least five from age five until age 18 or age 23, whatever the case may be, dribbling at basketball. By the time a boxer enters the ring as a pro, most of them have been boxing from the time they were five or eight years of age. By the time most tennis players, by the time most musicians, by the time most people who are elite at anything, nine times out of ten, they started out right early on. And even still, despite all that preparation, despite all that practice, despite all their talent, they oftentimes underperform on the big stage, right? I remember Kobe Bryant, when he first hit the NBA, all the skill, all the glamour, you could see the talent, you could see the confidence emanating from him. He still had bad days, man, where he shot air balls and missed dunks, right? And everybody laughed at him, right? I can think of so many different athletes when they made it to the big stage, they failed the first time. LeBron James, the perfect example, right? Made it to the big stage on several occasions, lost, right? Look, it doesn't matter where you're at. We all experience this unconscious, un this unconscious incompetency, right? You just don't know what you don't know. Now, in our business, we can overcome a lot of those things. And oftentimes, when you're a brand new entrepreneur, especially in our organization, um, you have leadership, right, that are doing three-way calls with you. That means answering questions and answering objections. So you don't have to deal with the brunt of those things, right? Um, and that's important because that's an opportunity for you to learn. It's an opportunity for you to hear objections. It's an opportunity to hear responses. It's an opportunity for you to hear how individuals who are more professional, more seasoned, better trained, more experienced than you overcome these things. Because there's just some things you don't know to anticipate, right? There's certain questions you don't know to ask. You have leadership that's willing to give presentations on your behalf, whether it be a Zoom call, or whether it be a two-on-one. And once again, that's a beautiful thing, right? Because you're just starting out, you're at your highest level of enthusiasm, but you don't know what you don't know, right? You've never heard of what Prospect by Legal Shield is before. 
Um, you've probably never done a two-on-one presentation before. Uh, three ways, what's that, <laughs> right? Um, you have all this new diction and language that you're learning, right? But the bottom line is you have leadership that is there to support you in your effort. And this stage of your business is important and when you should be soaking up everything, right? Less, less questions in terms of um, questioning the system and more just learning the system and learning how things are done, right? That's the stage that you're in. So you have your contacts, you have this enthusiasm, you have this wherewithal, you have this prior education, knowledge or training that you're bringing to the table, but you're still a babe in your business, right? You're unconsciously incompetent. You just don't know any better, right? And that's great. That's fantastic. That's a great and exciting time to be involved with the business, right? Um, you just need to understand that, once again, it's no different than, once again, an athlete or someone who's new to public speaking. What ends up happening is it's the speed of the game. It's the speed of the endeavor. When you decide to become an entrepreneur, you got to move at a different speed. You, you begin to think differently, you begin to respond differently, you begin to view things differently. And you're in that process in the beginning. And you're unconsciously incompetent. You don't know how to think. You don't really quite know how to respond. These are new muscles that you're developing. If you've never started up an entrepreneurial endeavor and ate off of it, okay, that was started a business where 100% your ability to put groceries on the table, your ability to keep a roof over your head, your ability to feed your children and do the things you want to do. If this is new to you, understand there's going to be a learning curve. There's going to be a process just like anything else. OK, and in the beginning, you're unconsciously incompetent. You're kind of just getting introduced to that process. And so you want to lean on leadership. You want to lean on experience. You want to lean on training. Right. But then there's another stage. There's a stage where you become consciously incompetent. Now, look, this is a dangerous stage. <laughs> Uh, because you have be, you start to become conscious of the fact that you're doing the work, you're doing the things and it's not going so well all the time. Right. You're looking at your performance and you're comparing it to individuals who've been doing the deal for two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years. Right. Individuals who've had entrepreneurial experience and you begin to realize, OK, I'm asking for referrals, but I'm not getting them. I'm doing presentations, but people aren't responding the way I anticipate. I'm doing exposures and I'm having a hard time following up with individuals. Right. And this is the wall that most people run into, the, un the consciously uncommented wall. And it can be scary, right? And it can be a little bit ego bruising, if you will, right? Because you have leadership in the beginning to kind of hold your hand, which is how it should work, right? We lift as we climb in our organization. We lead with activity. That's what leadership means. It's not we. I mean, it's not I. It's we, right? Um, we're basically passing the baton to each other. But the bottom line is you want to start at some point making the transition and doing things on your own. And this is good and this is bad, right? It's exciting because that means you're taking the bull by the horn. You're starting to take ownership of your business. You want to begin doing your own presentations. You want to begin doing your own exposures. Uh, you want to feel like you have the wherewithal to kind of manage the business yourself. But here's the thing. You're still relatively new, right? And what we don't want is a situation where you go out here and you get crushed. See, what ends up happening is you have a little bit of success and um, because you have that success in the beginning, you want to duplicate that success, but you start to get away from the things that brought you to success in the first place. So all of a sudden you're not doing three ways anymore. You want to share the information and not get leadership involved. Not necessarily the best decision. You want to start doing presentations on your own, but maybe you haven't seen enough presentations yet. Maybe you need to continue to get leadership involved. You're in a situation where maybe that's annoying. You're in a situation where um, you're doing Zoom calls and after the Zoom call ends, instead of getting leadership involved to do a three way or to answer questions, you're trying to answer the questions yourself. And the bottom line is you start bumping your head because you realize you're not getting the same response. Right. Look, this is where you have to fall back on the fundamentals. This is when you have to go back to the basics. This is where you have to sharpen the saw. Actually, believe it or not, this is when you need to lean on leadership even more. And be more conscientious, be more attentive, be more aware of the different things that your leadership is doing. Be more aware of the way in which we conduct and handle ourselves. Be more aware of the resources that are available to you. So you need to go back to that eight step exposure process training. You need to go back and visit the referral trainings. You need to go back and watch presentations from individuals who are more effective than you are at. This is important, right? You have to begin to kind of study your craft. You may be tempted to do less exposures. You might be tempted to do less work. Actually, you need to do more. 
you need to fail faster. So while you're getting the learn knowledge from leadership, you're getting the learn knowledge from the videos and the audios, the exposure process, how to conduct a presentation, how to ask for referrals, what are the steps in enrolling individuals, right? You're getting that learn knowledge. You actually need to increase your activity knowledge. In other words, you have to be willing to fail faster because with each failure, right? And failure doesn't mean you bump your head. And look, the bottom line is when you're a failure, I didn't say be a failure, I said fail, right? And there's, when you're a failure, you're a failure is someone who gets knocked down and stays down. The bottom line is most success is just your willingness to get up one more time and you've been knocked down. You just got to be willing to do that. So you got to be willing to go through objectives, objections. You got to be willing to go through some difficulty. You got to be willing to deal with a little bit of disappointment. It happens. Nobody shoots the rock and scores 100% of the time. It doesn't happen. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe videos. Don't believe Facebook, Instagram, BS.com, right? Uh, telling you because you chose entrepreneurship, money's going to fall from the sky like mad. That's not the way it works. Right? Everybody goes through their ugly duckling stage. You are in your ugly duckling stage and you're looking in the mirror and you realize, okay, I'm an ugly duckling. <laughs> so you have to lean on those individuals who are having the success that you want. You got to seek out mentorship. You got to get over yourself. I'm just saying, right? This is so absolutely important when you reach stage two of conscious uncompensated. You got to be willing to catch those L's and just know that the individuals who are having more success than you, trust me, they're getting the nose just like you are. They're getting the disappointing um, hangups. They're getting the disappointing no-shows. They're getting individuals who say they're going to look at information. They don't do it. They're getting individuals who don't even bother to reschedule the appointment. They just don't show up. We're all going through it because we're dealing with people. We're in a people business. Right. And people act crazy. <laughs> people don't keep commitments. People are just people. Right. It's just your leadership is going through it faster. And because people who are having more success than you have sharpened the saw and had a little bit more time to kind of develop skills, they're more able and more easy. It's easier for them to overcome the objections. And it's easier for them also to discern who their target market is. Right. And that's a separate training altogether. But I want you to know that, look, at this stage, you just simply need to press on. You need to fail faster right get more no's so you get more yeses make more invitations so you have more guests do more exposure so you can understand people's reactions a little bit better get more um people who don't show up for appointments so you get more that do right it's just the nature of the beast don't focus on the results focus on getting better at the activity because the system works else you wouldn't have people who are predecessors to you you wouldn't have millionaire club members. You wouldn't have individuals who are having two hundred and two thousand and ten thousand dollar days in their business. Right. That's happening in our organization on a regular basis. So if there was a lack of success, then you could doubt yourself. Don't just learn the system. Right. Learn that. Know they remove yourself from the equation. OK. So the next level of competency is when you begin to become um, consciously competent. Right. This is an important level in your business when you become consciously competent, meaning you reach the point where you're executing, right? You've committed to the ideal of failing faster. You've committed to the ideal of doing more than of the work. You've committed to the ideal of basically doubling down on the system and you become consciously competent. In other words, now you're doing three ways with consistency and you understand the psychology of the three ways, right? Because you're doing them so frequently. Now you're doing exposures with so much frequency that you can begin to anticipate and kind of know a little bit how people are going to respond. And you got a couple responses in your back pocket to objections that come up, right? Because you've been leaning on leadership. Now you've been listening to the scripts, but you've also written down the script and you have it in front of you. And so when you're picking up the phone, doing the exposure, when you're picking up the phone or you're doing a presentation or you're on a two on one or if you're in a situation where after a um, Zoom call transpired, not only have you listened to the script, but you actually have it written down so you know exactly how to respond. And look, I remember when I reached the stage of business as an entrepreneur, I literally had scripts that were sitting right in front of me. I finally learned that, look, it's not enough for me to listen to it. Look, you you don't know the script. You don't know what you should be saying until you can train what you should be saying. Right. That's how good you want to know the scripts. That's how good you want to know the tactics and strategies that are being shared with you by leadership, by individuals who are having more success than you. And this is where you become consciously competent. You start following the script. You start utilizing the tools. You start putting it all together. Right. And look, here's the thing. Because you were willing to fail faster, you start getting better. You start becoming more skilled. 
you start um, your professional and entrepreneurial acumen goes up your emotional IQ goes up you can pick up on things a lot faster in terms of how people are responding you begin to identify your target market better right who are the people who are interested in what you're doing like they're seeking you out they want what it is you provide they may not know how it's dressed up but they want solutions who are the people who are willing and able to pay for it right comfortably right they have disposable income and you're also looking for individuals who are ready to make decisions right now people who are you know which is why we deal primarily in the entrepreneurial and self-employed community and the small business community because entrepreneurs tend to be decision makers right so your, your, these things are happening in your business. So a couple other things have happened too. You're not the same person you were when you first started out. You're not the same entrepreneur anymore, right? You're more confident now because you've gone through the no's and you've gotten the yeses. You're, you not only have the scripts at your fingertips to listen to, but now you also have them written down and you know where to find them. And so you're not fumbling around trying to figure out what to say anymore, right? And because space repetition is the mother of all learning, the more you read the scripts, the more you apply the scripts, the more you look at the responses, the more trainings you attend, the more you have mentorship talks with your leadership and individuals around you who are more seasoned and more effective than you are, you begin not only to understand what they're doing, but you begin to understand the why and the how they're doing certain things, right? And as a result, something else changes in you. You grow in confidence. Your swagger begins to increase. And look, what they say is true. In life and especially especially in business life and business 99% attitude is all an inside job right so as you become consciously competent right you also gain confidence because you know okay I've been there I've done that I've made this error this is the adjustment I'm gonna make you make the adjustment and you start getting better results and you start feeling better about yourself but you don't get there without the unconscious <laughs> competency and without the conscious incompetency right so now you're consciously competent right it also means you probably reach a stage in your business where because you've been paid you've been compensated you know you're gonna be rewarded for your work right if you can overcome um, the consciously incompetent stage get over your ego you begin to realize that, okay this can work for me right so you start doing things like setting goals you start envisioning what your future is gonna look like this is part of the process right you begin to articulate and curate a life right it's predicated upon you winning right you stop using words like if I'm gonna do this and maybe I'll you start saying no this is gonna happen I'm gonna hit this goal I'm gonna perform this goal qualify I am gonna rank advance exec director I can do that I'm about that life I can build this business to a six-figure empire or seven-figure empire whatever you might be taking aim at you begin to set goals right you're developing consistency in your business and you can kind of see these things come into fruition right you begin to have affirmations where you begin to work on yourself even more than you did in the beginning right because now you're starting to believe right so you're reading the books of the month you are taking time to go through personal development exercises you're starting to invest in yourself right so you're going to trainings and going to workshops without your leadership having to cajole convince or inspire you to do so right or motivate you to do so you're inspired inside it's not about what's happening on the outside anymore it's about the things that you want and the things you believe you can achieve Right. And that confidence starts to flow and people are attracted to that. People want to do business with folks at the end of the day who are confident. They want to do business with folks who are enthusiastic, people who have belief. Right. Much of what leadership is about, success and business is about is being able to be of influence and be able to influence others. You become more influential because people can see the swagger, the belief, the confidence. They can start to see the results in you before they see the results outside of you. Right. And that's what that consciously competent stage of business is about. And it can be very exciting when you start reaching it. Right. Because you start seeing the little tweaks you can make to your game. OK. Now, the last level of business is when you're um, unconsciously competent. Right. And when you're unconsciously competent, you know, it's like the basketball player or the boxer or I like to use public speaking because it's something that I'm very familiar with. Right. When you're unconsciously competent at public speaking, you're no longer thinking about the words. You're just following the outline, right? It's like you're no longer reading the speech. You're no longer reading the poem. You're no longer focused on even your delivery. You're just focused on the timeline. And you are spending your time um, concentrating on other things, like the eye contact with the audience. You're concentrating on body language. 
you can hear your breathing and you can hear the breathing of your audience. You begin to kind of anticipate how they're going to respond to a word or a phrase or a sentence. You begin to focus on the art of what it is that you're doing. When you become unconsciously competent, you're not even thinking about what it is you're doing because there's already a flow. There's already an outline. There's already a narrative that's been crafted, right? And it's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in sports, right? The basketball team that's in flow, that's unconsciously competent, meaning you've been there, you've done that, you've experienced all these things. You have competence, you have swagger. Because of that, you've learned the system as an entrepreneur. So you're not even having to think about everything you should do every single day. You can begin to focus on the nuances of what you do, become even that much more effective, right? Um, and you don't have to think about um, dribbling the ball. You don't have to concentrate on improving that skill. You got it, right? Uh, as a boxer, you don't have to re respond on, you don't have to think about, should I change levels here to avoid getting hit or to be more effective at my offense? Right. As an entrepreneur, you're not thinking about what tool I should use. You got the tools in your phone already. Right. You, you, the exposure tools that you need, what you need to share, you already know what you're going to say. You already know how people are going to respond 90 percent of the time. Right. You don't always assume that you know everything, but you kind of know how people are going to respond. You can tell from how people respond to presentations that you're giving or how people interact with the leadership that you introduce them to. You can kind of see how people are either sorting themselves in or sorting themselves out and who you need to spend your time with. Not only from the standpoint of taking on clients, but guess what? You start to attract other people who see your swagger. They see your confidence. They start seeing that some of the things that were inside are now beginning to emanate outside and they want some of that, right? So you start attracting business partners. You start attracting recruits, right? Everything becomes easier. Not only are you calling up leadership to do three ways for you because you understand the psychology and import of that, but you're also turning around and you're starting doing it for your team. Not only are you seeking mentorship and people to pour into you, but now you are at a point where you can actually begin to pour into others, right? Because you're unconsciously competent. It's not effort anymore. It's free flowing, right? I compare it to like a basketball team. When a basketball team has been playing together for a very long time, when the talent has meshed and people know each other's strengths and weaknesses, right? The ball moves a lot faster. It goes from one side of the court faster than the other. And so they score more effectively, right? They can get back on defense and do the things they need to do more effectively as well. It's no difference in business, right? And so you reach a stage of your business where you become consciously, I mean, unconsciously competent. And that's a beautiful stage of the business to be in, right? So I wanted to share that um, with you. If you have hit the wall, you know, the basic gist of it is this. Number one, Fall back on leadership when you hit that wall. Seek out mentorship. S go back to the fundamentals, right? As a leadership, uh, legal shield entrepreneur, right? And I'm thinking my Freudian slip where I'm thinking about leadership because that's really the conversation I'm having with you right now. It's about a leader. This is a leadership conversation, right? And understanding the actual levels of leadership too. Um, but fall back on the fundamentals, right? Get that eight-step training process down. Learn how to ask referrals. Slow down in the process of doing that. Um, you begin to understand how to develop relationships and how to help people sort themselves in or sort themselves out in terms of being clients of yours, in terms of being potential business partners, right? Um, make sure you're attending the trainings. You know, go to the shieldnation.com website. Make sure you're at the Super Saturdays to pick up those nuggets. Of course, we have convention. But invest in yourself. Read the book of the month, right? The book of the month wouldn't be suggested if it wasn't for a reason. These are the things you can do to kind of level up, right? And these is, this is how you overcome the wall, right? Lean on those who have plenty of incentive to support you, but also those who desire to see you, want, to see you win as well. So hopefully this was beneficial and helpful in terms of understanding where you're at at different stages of your business and understand that there's even another stage beyond unconsciously competent, right? But also understand that every level that you reach, you're going to start all over again. At every level, right? Whenever you want to level up in anything, there's going to be turbulence. There's going to be strife because you're going to use different muscles, which means when you, as you begin to use those different muscles, you're going to become a, you're going to become unconsciously incompetent again. You're going to become consciously incompetent again. You're going to be consciously competent and unconsciously competent. It's just the deal, right? It's part of the learning process as human beings. So, all right. With that being said, everyone have a fantastic day. Goodbye for now. Huh, it's not cooperating. Let's see if I do it this way. Will it cooperate? Okay, 
can't turn your phone while you're live.